Hi there, Joe Fernandez here, and today I'll be going over Fury Warrior playstyle. We will quickly talk about updated comps, talents, and traits, followed by detailed fundamentals of Fury Warrior gameplay. The best comps right now for Fury are KFC and Fury Warrior Pre Shaman. KFC has crazy high single target damage, gaining the Mortal Strike effect through the Hunter, as well as nice crowd control for the enemy healer. Fury Warrior Priest Shaman is surprisingly good as it's very durable against most compositions and has a ton of damage overall as well as nice CC chains for the enemy healer if you want to play offensive. Your go-to talent choice now looks something like this. The only main change is playing with Siege Breaker over Anger Management as this can give extra burst more often and has great synergy with Dragon's Roar dealing high burst damage more often which can be nice for getting kills or forcing defensive cooldowns. The most ideal trait option is to get 3 of the Reckless Flurry traits, or 2 Reckless Flurry and 1 Simmering Rage trait. These traits give the most damage throughout an arena game. It will be dependent on uptime, but that should be relatively easy to achieve as Fury has Thirst for Battle. Other traits that are good are Champion of Azeroth, Battlefield Precision or Focus, Simmering Rage, Pulverizing Blows, Laser Matrix, and Dagger in the Bag. As you can see, there are a lot of different traits available that are good for Fury. An update on the end chance is to have Quick Navigation on the main hand and Masterful Navigation on the off hand. If it's the other way around, then it won't matter too much, but it's ideal to have Quick Navigation on the main hand. Fury has been changed a lot since Legion, going from very little passive damage to having very strong passive damage even on high armor targets which hinder your damage. Doing great passive damage can overwhelm your enemies, forcing defensive plays or cooldowns, leading to having wins later on. Mastering your basic rotation along with good rage management will give you an easier time to slay your enemies. Using Rampage will not only be massive dump on Rage, but it will give you the Enrage effect, allowing you to do even more damage, which is the core buff for Fury Warriors to have throughout the game. Playing with Enduring Rage means you can refresh Enrage with your Raging Blows, allowing you to easily maintain Enrage, improving on your consistent damage. Furious Slash can be taken against teams where you have close to 100% uptime, as this can increase your DPS, giving you a flat out 6% haste buff. It takes 3 globals to maintain the 3 stacks, so it's important to get the buffs up ASAP and maintain the stacks throughout a game, to capitalize on increased damage. This improves your consistent damage and also can help with burst allowing for even more rage generation and more rampages to slay your opponents. Keeping up with consistent damage is how you will get pressure as Fury, so maximizing your DPS on a target can force a lot of pressure by yourself, forcing the enemy team to use defensive cooldowns to survive your relentless damage. Knowing how to do consistent damage is one thing, knowing how to burst is slightly different. You still use most of your normal rotation, but you add offensive cooldowns to give you increased burst, which are your biggest way of getting kills, or at least forcing big defensive cooldowns. Bursting well is critical for Fury, and I will go through exactly how to do this. Recklessness will be your biggest cooldown in order to burst down your enemies. Even though the crit aspect of this is nerfed, it doubles your rage generation, allowing for many uses of Rampage, which is incredibly powerful at increasing your burst. Using this with other abilities, such as Siege Breaker and Dragon's Roar, increases its power and makes it do even more absurd damage, usually forcing heavy defensive cooldowns or killing the enemy target. As briefly stated, Siege Breaker will also help with burst pressure and should be ideally used on cooldown so you can increase your burst pressure windows. It has a low cooldown, ideal for creating offensive opportunities, whilst Recklessness isn't ready and can be used in synergy with Dragon Roar, as they both have nearly the same cooldown. This in conjunction with Dragon Roar can do a ton of burst damage to try and global your opponent. 
So that brings us on to Dragon Roar. As explained before, it goes very well with Siege Raker and should ideally be used with it every time to get the most damage out of it. However, it can be used in situations where the enemy is low on HP and you feel that you can global them or force a huge defensive cooldown, which can be super nice to force with just a Dragon Roar. The added power of this is that it's also unpredictable unless the enemy tracks Dragon Roar. Being unpredictable with it means that the enemy will be surprised by it and possibly overreact to it. On the other side, they could feel like they are fine, yet you explode them with a Dragon Roar, taking them by surprise, possibly killing them. With the power of Recklessness, Siege Breaker and Dragon Roar, you can deal absurd amounts of burst pressure on quite a regular scale. It's important to have good Recklessness windows, as well as other windows with just Siege Breaker and Dragon Roar. Be as efficient with it as possible so you can kill your enemies. The main power of Fury, as we have discussed, is to have great damage and burst damage in order to play the spec to its fullest. One way to help with that is to keep up to your target efficiently and we will discuss how to do that well. A big strength to Fury and why it can maintain uptime on targets better than arms is due to the honor talent thirst for battle. This is incredibly powerful as it removes snares and makes you immune to them, as well as gives you 15% increased speed every time you bloodthirst. Knowing its strength is important as whilst you have the buff up, you can utilize it by saving other mobility cooldowns to reach your opponent. That way you can use other mobility options when they are forced to use theirs, making it incredibly easy to stick to your target like glue. This means you have not only more defensive options for kiting, but you can play more aggressively too, easily keeping up to most healers and being nearly immune to snares making it extremely difficult for most enemies to peel you. Charge is a main tool for warriors throughout time and it's another ability used to keep up to targets. As we discussed, using Thirst for Battle is extremely valuable for Fury and being able to charge to Bloodthirst will activate this and increase our uptime on our opponents. This is powerful as you can bait the enemy to use a mobility cooldowns such as Blink, Tiger Dash or Disengage and reconnect with ease due to the speed buff from Thirst for Battle and Piercing Howl. Further increasing your uptime will help you pump damage into your enemy and crush them with crazy Fury damage. Heroic Leap will be another tool used to maintain uptime in order to slay your opponents. The best way to use this is either on big mobility cooldowns such as Gateway, or when the opponents are far behind pillars as this can do what your other mobility cooldowns can't do. It also makes it a lot easier to get fears on the enemy healer than reconnect with a charge on the DPS to make offensive goes. Using mobility well will force your enemies into rough positions when combined with great fury damage. Being unsnarable gives you a crazy advantage against your opponents that most people may not be able to play around, so keep abusing thirst for battle for uptime as much as possible, using charge and heroic leap as backup options when you can't reconnect otherwise. Doing this should mean you have insanely good uptime throughout a game critical to getting kills as a fury warrior. We've went into detail about how great Thirst for Battle is for offensiveness, and it's also incredible for its defensive purposes too, allowing us to kite often and easily in conjunction with Piercing Howl. Simply by using a Bloodthirst whilst running away, and using Piercing Howl on your enemies, you can easily kite most melee DPS as well as get away from casters if needs be. The reason why kiting in this manner is so good is due to being able to avoid offensive goes on yourself by yourself. You will also avoid a lot of passive damage and make it extremely hard or even impossible for most melee to maintain uptime on you if you want to. This can make you live better which is a key trait for your warriors will need in order to achieve higher ratings. It's simple yet very effective. Now, even though kiting can help you survive, the biggest self-survivability toolkit you have as Fury is surprisingly your self-heals. Using this as best as possible can be the difference between living or dying, which is heavily needed against high single target damaging comps. 
Bloodthirst is in your normal rotation and it gives you 5% health per application on such a low cooldown. This is incredibly powerful for sustained healing and when in need to survive, I'd advise using this on cooldown so you can survive easier. This will hinder your rotation for the cost of living easier, which will be needed in some matchups such as versus Jungle Cleave or Rogue Mage Paladin. Another key healing aspect of Fury Warrior comes in the form of an honor talent known as Battle Trance. This essentially gives you an undispellable hot that adds to your self healing, making you even more tanky against compositions where you need to live. The main problem with Battle Trance is that you must activate it with two raging blows on the same target in a row. If you are to raging blow, then use another damaging ability then Raging Blow, you will not activate Battle Trance. So it's important when you want to activate it, you use Raging Blow twice in a row on the same target to activate Battle Trance. You will be hindering your DPS rotation again, but for this buff it is well worth it and very important to manage as it could be the difference between easily surviving and being destroyed. Also note that if you were to use an ability in between like Piercing Howl, then Battle Trance will still activate, it's only affected by other damaging spells. This leads us to our big defensive cooldown, Enrage Regeneration, which increases the healing effect of your Bloodthirst giving you 20% HP back. This is incredibly powerful and can be used against huge offensive cooldowns to completely negate them. Cooldowns like Vendetta are great to use Enrage Regen against, as you can completely counter it and most likely live with this cooldown. Just make sure you have your Bloodthirst ready so you can use it as soon as you press the cooldown to almost guarantee your survival. Keeping up with your self healing will be a vital trait for Fury as it will be the difference between living and dying against compositions that tunnel you down. Being able to capitalize on your healing also means your healer will have an easier time to play the game as well as be more mana efficient if needing to prolong games into dampening. So that's it everyone on this Fury Warrior playstyle guide. Make sure to plus skill as always and feel free to leave comments below for Fury related questions. Thanks for watching.